Hi, I'm Richard from Baal, and this is my rig rundown. Starting with my bass, I play a Music Man Subray 5. Um, five string bass, I've used five strings for years. I like to try and use the full range that it gives me as much as possible. Uh, I play with my fingers whenever I can, um, but I use my pick whenever it's a bit too fast for my fingers to keep up with or when I need a bit of extra attack. So in reality, I play about 50-50 with a pick or without. My amp is a Dark Glass Microtubes 900, which is a 900 watt amp, which is insanely loud. I really barely have to turn the volume up at all in practice. Um, I got it just before we recorded Ellipsism. It's got a lot of EQ options for my clean sound, and it's also got Dark Glass's VMT and B3K overdrives built into it, both of them in there with a foot switch as well, but I haven't actually used either of those yet, so that's something I'll probably look at in future. My pedal board is set up to be used by two bands. There's Baal in which I play bass, and I also play guitar in another band, so some of these pedals I bought for one band or the other specifically, but they usually find use in both bands in the end. Up first is a Boss TU3 tuner, which is pretty straightforward, and then I've got a Mua Pure Octave, which is an octave pedal with a lot of settings. You can go up to two octaves up or two octaves down, any combination thereof. Mostly I just use the down one octave setting for particularly dramatic parts of our songs, the climaxes like in Long Live towards the end, where I can play a higher octave part and still have the bass frequencies covered by the lower octave in the pedal. After that we go into what is, I suppose, the most complex part of my board, which is a Boss LS2 line selector, which is essentially a hub for two separate loops of other pedals which are plugged into it, which I can switch between by pressing the line selector. So for example, if I've got loop A active, then I can turn things on and off in loop B without affecting the current sound, and then I can switch straight to loop B by pressing the line selector, which basically helps me with live transitions at gigs where I need to switch between sounds very quickly. Loop A of the line selector is where I keep all my distortions and overdrives, which start with an Ibanez Mini Tube Screamer, which as you might expect I bought for guitar, but I do use it in bar sometimes. For example, in the build-up uh, towards the end of Father of the Sea of the Moon, I use it to give a little bit of bite to an otherwise clean channel, but also sometimes I layer it up on top of my main bass overdrive sound to make it cut through a little bit more like at the beginning of Long Live. Next is a Boss ODB3 bass overdrive, which is my main heavy sound classic pedal. Uh, that's all over ellipsism and it's my go-to sound for anything heavy and distorted and importantly it maintains a lot of bass frequencies which is important for my sound. Last in this lineup of pedals which is in the first loop of the line selector is a pedal I actually got quite recently and I didn't have when we recorded ellipsism. It's Primitive Man's Lifer bass distortion pedal which was made by Foul Sounds in collaboration with John Campos from Primitive Man who are a favourite band of mine and one of my favourite bass tones. Previously in this space I had a bright orange Vox Trike distortion pedal which I used in conjunction with the ODB3 either for big crunchy slow parts where I needed to jump out of the texture a bit like the bass led chorus of Orchestra of Flies or in big open droney notes like the start and the end of Father to See the Moon. The life of which I have now fulfills much the same role but with a lot more filth and generally it's just a lot better. Uh, and also it has a drone circuit in it which makes a lot of horrible noises, it's got three oscillators you can control separately or together and you can run that whole thing either in conjunction with the bass distortion or as a standalone instrument. Obviously that's not on ellipsism at all but it's something that I'm playing with a lot now for new material. There's just one pedal in loop B of the line selector which is an Electro Harmonics Key 9 pedal which is part of EHX's series of pedals like the B9 and the C9 which makes your guitar or bass sound like a lot of weird things that are not guitars or basses. This one, the Key 9, I did buy from my other band where I play guitar, and it makes a guitar sound like one of nine different things, including various keyboard sounds, organ sounds, some tuned percussion, there's some steel drums in there. On Ellipsism, I use the Dynamo setting in the proggy time signature part of Long Live, which gives sort of a spacey sound, but it's still very percussive and bassy. And I'm using some more of these sounds, like the organs, on our new material. Coming out of the line selector altogether, there's a couple more pedals at the end of the chain. First is a Mua Shimverb, which is a reverb pedal which has a couple of big reverb settings, and then a third setting called Shimmer, which adds a ninth above whatever note you're playing into the reverb, which gives a little creepy weird extra sound. I use that setting in the sort of droney part of Long Live, and then I use the standard reverb settings in some of the other quieter passages. After that is a Boss DD3 delay pedal, classic delay pedal that I use in the same droney part of Long Live and also occasionally in some other quiet passages. And finally my pedal board chain ends with a Boss RC1 loop station, which is something I find really helpful for writing when I'm looping something I can work out extra parts that go along with it quite easily. And in the live setting I use it to loop drones either at the start and end of songs or whilst we tune in between songs.
So as you can see, I've got quite a lot of stuff to play with there. Uh, I've changed one of my pedals around since we recorded the album, so there's plenty more in there. And even the pedals that I had before, there's a lot of settings that I haven't really got into yet. So looking forward to seeing what kinds of sounds I can make for our next release. Hope you enjoyed watching that, and if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments.